When leaving your vessel to go ashore, the tide can be a real pain. There's an agonizing 12 hour wait between high tides. So if you're not careful, you can easily be left high and dry, stranded until the water comes back in. You could just anchor out in deep water and swim ashore and then wade back out when you need to retrieve your vessel. But it's winter here in Australia and the water's starting to get cold. Plus, you never know what's lurking nearby. So lately, I've been experimenting with a clever anchoring technique that I think you may be interested in. This anchoring technique allows you to step directly from the beach onto your vessel, regardless of the tide, while still remaining anchored in deep water. This anchoring method works particularly well with any small boat, jet ski or canoe, and is useful if you are going ashore for a few hours or a few nights. The system is called a loop anchor. It's sometimes referred to as a clothesline anchor or a pulley anchor. Aside from your usual anchor and rope, the only additional things you'll need are an extra long rope and some snap hooks. We'll refer to this extra long rope as the loop rope. The loop rope needs to be at least double the distance between the shore and where you want to keep your vessel anchored in deep water. It's best to use a rope that does not float such as nylon. This ensures any slack rope sinks to the seabed and is less likely to be cut or sucked up by a passing boat or jet ski. On my jet ski, I typically carry a 6mm diameter rope, at least 50 meters long. But for this demonstration, I'll use a much shorter, bright red rope. On both ends of the loop rope, you attach a snap hook. You can also attach floats, but it's not essential. You can use any type of anchor with this system. Each anchor has its own advantages and disadvantages. If your vessel is relatively small like mine, I like to use a sandbag anchor, provided I can find some heavy rocks or debris ashore to fill it with. Don't risk filling it with sand or mud, as it's likely to wash out and empty over time. Sandbag anchors are small and light to store on board. And unlike traditional anchors, that require a long anchor rope and chain so they lie flat and dig into the seabed, sandbag anchors rely solely on their weight for holding power. You therefore only need a short anchor rope long enough to reach the surface at high tide. The benefit of this shorter anchor rope is a much smaller swing radius, so your vessel can be anchored in a much more confined area. Regardless of which anchor type you choose, you want to attach a float and a snap hook to the end of the anchor rope. The float will allow you to see and retrieve your anchor, while the snap hook allows you to easily attach the anchor onto the long loop rope. Okay, so now onto how to set up and attach everything. When you arrive at your anchorage, briefly motor into shore and find a sturdy and reliable tie-off point along the beach. Let's assume it's a tree, as this is what I generally use. But if there's none around, you could use a post, a screw-in sand peg, or even a second anchor. Run the loop rope around the back of the tree, so the loop rope encircles the tree. Clip one end of the loop rope to the bow of your vessel, and the other end to the stern of your vessel. Now clip the anchor rope snap hook onto the loop rope towards the bow end. Ensure the anchor rope snap hook can slide freely along the loop rope. With everything correctly attached, it's time to drop the anchor. But first, you've got to get back out to deep water. There's a few different ways you can do this. The most obvious is to slowly motor out and then back in again. But you risk cutting or sucking up the long trailing loop rope in your own prop or impeller. So instead, I prefer this little trick. Balance the anchor on an outer edge of your vessel with the loop rope slung around it.
Now give your vessel a big push from the beach. When your vessel reaches the desired anchor location, give the loop rope a tug. This should topple the anchor off your vessel and into the deep water. Now tie the loop rope off of the tree to stop the loop from circulating. The loop rope segment running from the tree through the anchor clip to the bow of your vessel should remain under tension, whereas the segment running from the tree to the stern of your vessel can be slack. This will keep the bow of your vessel correctly pointing into the current. With your vessel now anchored in deep water off the beach, the tide becomes irrelevant. Whenever you need to retrieve your vessel, you simply undo the knot at the tree and pull your vessel into shore using the loop rope attached to the stern. Conversely, when you want to return the vessel to deep water, you pull on the other side of the loop so your vessel heads bow first back out to the deep water. When your vessel reaches the anchor float, you again tie the loop rope to the tree, preventing the loop from revolving. If you want to go away in your vessel during the day, you simply pull it ashore, unclip the bow and stern snap hooks, and clip them together. By joining the snap hooks together, you keep the loop intact, so that when you return to shore later that day, you can simply reattach the snap hooks to your vessel, and pull it back out into deep water. When it's finally time to leave and go home, simply pull your vessel into shore, remove the bow and stern snap hooks, and pull all the loop rope into shore. You can then safely motor out to the anchor rope float and pull it up to retrieve your anchor. Well, I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other anchoring tips or tricks, and please click subscribe. It's totally free and helps grow the channel. Thanks for joining me today, hang in there, and I'll see you next time.